What's going on everybody? Welcome back to the channel. Today we are back out in the garage and we are gonna do some bait making. Today we are making umbrella rigs, Alabama rigs, whatever you wanna call them. Um, years back these things came on to the scene like fire, Paul Elias just dominated a tournament throwing the Alabama rig and it was the, it was the craze for a while. Um, definitely not as popular as it used to be, but there's still definitely fish to be caught throwing an Alabama rig. Today I'm going to go through the dual molds that um, you can use to make your own Alabama rigs, um, some swim bait jig heads as well, and some modifications that you can do. We're just going to discuss those in these videos, or in this video, but um, in videos to come I'm going to show you specifically how you can modify these and add a little bit more flash, some blades, some different things like that, just to spice it up. Or, you know, if you live in a state like I do in California where you can only have three hooks or, you know, Arizona, Nevada, I believe it's only two hooks. Um, there's different laws out there. I think Minnesota, I heard, is a one hook. So you have a lot of dummy baits or a lot of blades on that thing. So I'm going to go through, show you how to make this umbrella rig, talk about some different things that you can do to, you know, modify your umbrella rig. And I'll do that at the end of the video so that way you guys can see everything. And then what I will also do in another video coming up, don't know exactly when, but soon, I will go through and show you how I modify the wire form and everything from do-it molds to make mine California compliant, how you can make it um, a little bit more flashy, how you can make it compliant to whatever state you are in. So that's one thing you definitely wanna make sure of when you start making your own baits or buying umbrella rigs and stuff like that is making sure that they are legal where you fish because there are some different laws in different parts of the country and you need to be careful so you're not gonna get in trouble while you're out trying to catch some fish, trying to have a good time and the next thing you know, you're coming home with a ticket. So stay tuned for today's video. It's gonna be all about umbrella rigs, all about Alabama rigs, and I'm gonna show you how to make them. Okay, so as you can see right here, we have our swim bait jig heads right here and they have three aught hooks in them and we have our umbrella rig wire forms from do it molds all this stuff is easily purchased at doitmolds.com and the specific molds we're using today this is the ultra rig that's going to be your umbrella rig mold and then we have our shad head shad head rig jig that's going to be our swim bait jig head mold that we're going to be using in this video so some of the other equipment that you're going to need for this project is the wb 400 wire keeper and obviously you're gonna need a lead pot to pour the lead to make the, the jig heads and to pour the lead head on the umbrella rig. Those wire keepers are gonna go on your swim bait jig head on the bottom. That's gonna help you keep the plastic on your jig head. So this is actually gonna be the second time that I've ever made an umbrella rig. I did a little trial run after I got all the stuff in from Do It Molds and I realized that you need to make sure that the top part of your umbrella rig, the part that goes in the mold, you need all of it to be hot. You need your mold to be hot and you need your wire form to be hot because there's a lot of metal that's getting in the way of that lead as it's going into the mold from the sprue. So you need to make sure that it's hot so that way it doesn't get um, cold and start to harden up before all the lead gets in there. And I'm gonna show you how you can heat up your equipment so that way you don't have any of these issues and something that I like to do that's gonna help your lead go into your mold a little bit more smoothly. Okay, so this is the area right here that you definitely wanna make sure is nice and hot inside your mold because that's where you're gonna end up having all this lead come in and it's gonna hit all these different metal wires and if they're not hot enough, it's gonna make that lead cool down and then you're not gonna get a nice even pour and a complete you know, head on this umbrella rig. Okay, so as you can see, we have our ultra rig set up with our wire form inside the mold. Now, this wire form is super long, so you need to have something outside to stabilize it. Just having another mold is perfect to use to stabilize everything so that way you can close your mold up uh, nicely. You are going to have to pay attention to how you close up your mold so that way everything lines up inside your mold correctly and that way you can get it to close and you're not going to have a bunch of flashing and stuff like that. Okay, so what we're gonna do right now is close up our mold, and it does take a little bit of stabilization to get everything to close and line up as it's supposed to. So bear with me while we do this. Okay, so, at, so right here, this means it's not in there appropriately. So you have this gap in it 
that's going to create flashing so we need to fix that our our wire form is not inside of our mold how we want it so we need to set it back down and check out what the issue is and get everything lined up appropriately okay so off camera i got everything into my mold as you can see everything is nice and flush right here so that means our wire form is inside of our mold the way we want it to pour so what we're going to do now and this is how i like to heat everything up and what we're going to do now is set our mold upside down on top of our lead pot like so this is going to take the heat from our lead pot and it's going to heat the mold up and the wire form and that's going to help us to get a better pour now i told you a second ago that i show you one of the things that i like to do every once in a while to help everything go in there smoothly and this dry teflon lube can really help out um, it can help some of the lead go in there a little bit smoother a little bit easier if you're having issues sometimes so i'm going to skip a couple steps here and then go back to the umbrella rig so i'm going to leave it up on top of the lead pot to get nice and hot so i'm going to set up and start pouring some of these jig heads right here and what i'm going to use is quarter ounce jig heads so i'm going to pour five of the same size jig heads and get those ready for our umbrella rig so the first thing you're going to do is you're going to take your hook and this is a three out hook and you are going to lay it right into the mold this is pretty simple this is standard and pretty much any project that you're going to do and then you're going to take one of these wb 400 wire keepers and you're going to slide it into the mold and i'll show you that in a second okay so right there is our wire keeper hopefully you can see that okay and what we're going to do is we're going to just take that little keeper and we are going to put it inside of our mold just like so and it goes right into the slot right like you can see right there it goes into that slot we're going to close up our mold and then we are going to pour okay so we are over here at our lead pot and we are going to pour our first jig head it's the middle one right here so we're just going to put it underneath the spout here pour it on inside and then hopefully we got a nice clean pour inside there okay so we have our lead in there we're going to check our jig head see how it turned out so we'll open up our mold and it looks like we got a good pour let's check the other side and we do we have a good pour so this is our first quarter ounce jig head we'll set this aside and we're going to make up four more so as you can see uh these jig heads still have the sprue which is this right here and all you got to do is just take some cutters cut it off just like so and do it on the next one and then do it on the last one and now i have all five of mine ready to go one thing i do like to do is just smooth out the bottom and i just like to take a file and just smooth it out on the bottom just like so and then you just do that on the rest of them it smooths everything out you don't have any sharp edges from when you cut them off using the cutters and i'll do that on the rest of them and then th you could put eyes on these if you want they have a slot for eyes um, i will do that here in a second and i'll show you how i do that so i like to use epoxy this is obviously gorilla epoxy and you want to make sure it dries clear that's really important because you don't want white or some weird color on your jig head so what you do is you want to put out even amounts of epoxy of hardener and resin and it doesn't take much you don't need to put a lot on, out on there but you put that out onto i'm just using a cardboard piece of cardboard from the packaging of the dual molds products because i already opened it the bag's open so i just use this to make my stir up my epoxy but right now what i'm going to do is i'm just going to get like a toothpick or something to stir that in and get everything to start to harden up and then i'll put it on the eye slots eye sockets and then i will put the actual lure eye on top of the epoxy okay so literally you just have to stir it together you just want to get both the hardener and the resin to mix together well so that way everything starts to set up evenly and then all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this same toothpick and then dab a little bit of the epoxy into the eye sockets. And then I will use a pair of tweezers to pick up each individual eye and set them into the jig head. So I'm gonna get one of my jig heads right here. I'm gonna dab in the epoxy like so. It doesn't take a lot. That's good enough. Take the next one, dab some epoxy in there. And then I'll do that on all five of these. Three, get number four. And then we got number five. 
just like that. Okay, so I got my tweezers, and what I'm gonna do is just literally just take one off, set it right on top, just like that, dab it in. That one's ready to go. Do just we'll do that five more times, and then our eyes will be all done, and then we'll just have to flip them over and do the other side. So we just gotta keep doing this one by one. I don't know of a better way to do this, but I like doing the tweezers because it gives me, you know, a nice point in order to pick these up off the paper. Um, that's just, I found that to be one of the easiest ways to go about doing it. So we got all five of them in there. So we'll just have to flip them over and do it all over again. So off camera, I finished up all these lure eyes. So you can see got one on this side and we got one on the other side. I did the other four as well. And then what I like to do is I literally just hang them on this wooden dowel I have right here to let them dry. I, um, I like to have them hanging to dry because I don't want them to, you know, get stuck to the table from lying on one side. So I hang them up so that way there's no issues with that. And um, once I'm done pouring the umbrella rig itself, we'll take those down. They should be dry enough for the video and I'll show you how to hook everything up. Okay, so the umbrella rig mold still sitting on top of our lead pot. As you can see, you have all that wire sticking out of the mold. So a lot of you guys might be going, okay, I'm going to have to use a ladle, or if I don't have a ladle, how am I going to handle this? Here's what I figured out, because I don't have a ladle, and this is the only pot that I have to use, so I had to figure out how to make this happen and how to use everything to still uh, make this umbrella rig. So let me show you what I did. So basically how I figured out how to handle the situation is I moved my lead pot to the very edge of my workbench and what i'm going to do is i'm going to take this mold and i'm going to hang it at an angle so everything hangs off the edge of my table and that ends up being perfectly underneath the spout of the lead pot which is right here if you can see that nail sticking out of it that's the bottom of the spout and it'll go directly into my different openings to make the different size uh, umbrella rigs. Okay, so I did spray some dry lube into my mold to hopefully help the lead flow in there nice and evenly and it should be hot enough and I do have a nice stream of lead coming out of the pot so I'm going to put this underneath there and I'm going to pour my lead into the mold here in a second. Okay, so we're going to pour our lead into our mold and see how things go. So our lead is now in there and we are going to check it out and see if we have a good pour. Now it's time to see if we got a good pour. So we're gonna open up our mold, see how everything turned out. So far it looks good. Pull it out, check the other side. Looks good on the other side. So we are in a position where we can cut our sprue. So here's one side, here's the other side. And then we're gonna cut this off right now. Take our cutters, just cut it off like so. And then I'm gonna take the file and just file this down just a slightly. Doesn't take much, just a little bit to smooth off those sharp edges. And uh, we're good to go. So if you want to, you can add eyes to both of these sides if you want to, and I'll do that in a second. I'm gonna do that off camera because I already showed you guys how to do that. So give me a second, I'll put these eyes on and then we'll get move into putting all of our components on right here. Okay, so we got our lure eyes on our umbrella rig. So we are set up to start putting all of our components on. So before we put all those components on, I do want to touch on one thing. You can obviously paint those jig heads. You can obviously paint the head of the umbrella rig. Um, you could use Protec paint, which is what I use a lot. Um, I have other videos that show how to powder paint your jigs, your jig heads, whatever. Um, process is pretty simple. You heat up that lead, you dip it in the paint, and then you're going to want to bake everything in order to get that paint nice and hard on there. I don't feel it's necessary for, the, for where I live to paint that stuff. I actually like and prefer that plain lead color, the silver lead color, more so than painting. But if you prefer to paint, you can definitely paint it like a shad white or whatever you're trying to imitate and bake it, get that nice and hard and you are good to go with, with that. So I just wanted to make sure I touched on that, let you guys know that that is an option. That's something you can do. So one thing I do want to make sure I cover with these umbrella rigs is you can see we have four different arms on this thing. They're all the same size and we have this other one that's long and you either want to have the long one on the bottom or in the middle you can decide how you want to do that but um some of that might determine be, be determined based upon the different laws that you have so like obviously um you're going to want the long one if you're in minnesota or something like that where you can only have one hook 
to be the one that has the hook and you're gonna have your dummies on the shorter side so that way the fish can come and get the easiest one with the hook on it because that's probably the one they're gonna bite. And then um, like for California, you can have three. So your bottom three are gonna have the one, the hooks on them. And then your top two are gonna have your dummies or your blades on there. So just make sure to check out the different laws and maximize where your hooks go so that way the fish that come after these baits are going to have the best chance at getting the hooked baits or and not the dummies or the blades. Okay, so I did some of this off camera, but the next step in this process is to spread out these arms so that way you can have separation and all of your baits, your dummies, blades, whatever you're, you're going to put on there. In this case, we're going to put all five baits that I made on there and um, I'll do that in a second. But one thing I want to show you guys is right here in the middle of this head, the lead head, you want to take a look and see where these wires come out and position them in the right spot. So that way you have good coverage and a good bait school look to your umbrella rig. So as you can see, I've already bent the wires on this umbrella rig and there's separation in all these arms. So that way the baits don't tangle up you have a good, nice school look to the umbrella rig. And one of the nice things about this one is that it has that head on it with the different lure eyes in there. So you're gonna have, you know, that, that bait look to it or the shad look at the front of this umbrella rig. And then you're gonna have the dummies or your hooked baits with the swim baits on there on the back of this umbrella rig. So you got good coverage, good look to this entire thing. The next step, we are going to get those jig heads put on this umbrella rig. So one really nice thing about this Do It Molds umbrella rig is that it has these snaps and swivels already on there. So it takes a bunch of the steps out of the equation because if it was just the arms, you'd have to make this bend, you'd have to connect the swivel and you'd have to connect the snap. But Dual Molds has, you, has it covered and all you have to do is unclip this snap just like this. Just gonna bend it out just a little bit so I have room to put my jig head on there. And literally you just slide the, the eye of the jig head on there like that. And then close it up. And now you have a bait ready to go on your umbrella rig. And then you do that four more times or how many more times you're allowed to do based on the laws in your state. So as you guys can see right here, I have jig heads on all the different arms of this umbrella rig. I did it off camera. Um, it's pretty simple to put these on. I showed you how to do the first one. You just gotta follow that process to do the other four. And like I said, this is not a legal Alabama rig or umbrella rig that I'm allowed to throw here in California. So what I would do is I would make these top two right here dummies or I'd add blades on there and I will show you guys how you can do that in another video but for those of you where this setup would be legal you're good to go it didn't take very long dual molds has you covered with these different swivels and snaps already provided for you it makes putting on these lead jig heads super easy the only thing left to do in this entire process is put your favorite swim bait on here that could be the dual molds ripper if you make your own plastics. It could be, you know, what your swim bait of choice. Um, you know, I, I can make some of the rippers myself, so I might put some of those on there. I might put, you know, Kytex or the, you know, Divine swim baits from Sixth Sense or whatever brand you like. Um, you just put that on these jig heads and cast that thing out there and hold on because this umbrella rig is gonna get bit and now is the season to do so. So as you guys can see, Making your own umbrella rigs is not that complicated. It's a pretty simple process, especially with the way Dual Molds has it all set up. They have the mold for you, they have the wire forms, the snaps, the swivels, everything's already set up and ready for you to go fishing. All you gotta do is pour that lead head on the, on the top of it, have some jig heads already ready to go, put those swim baits on there, and you're ready to go catch some fish. It's a very simple, easy process. If I can do it, this was literally the second one that I've ever made and um, I think it turned out pretty good. That thing will go out, that will catch fish. Um, so it's a really simple process. Go check it out, doitmolds.com. And all this stuff from this video is gonna be linked in the description. Um, so big thank you to Do It Molds for um, getting this stuff out here so I can make this content for you guys. Really hope you go check out some of the different molds, even if it's not the umbrella rig, but you wanna make something else, some jigs, spinner baits, whatever. 
um, go check out doitmolds.com. Um, if you wanna make plastics, I've got other videos where you can see how I make plastics using different Do It Molds products. Um, like I said a second ago, you can buy Do It Molds Ripper Mold to make your own swim baits that you could put on this umbrella rig. Um, hopefully in the future, I'll have some videos that come out where I'm catching some fish on one of these umbrella rigs, but I will for sure do a video in the future talking about how I would modify that umbrella rig to make it legal here in California because I said we can only have three hooks out here in California. So the one that I just made on video, I couldn't throw out here in California, but I know in a lot of different states around the country, you could throw that exact setup. So that's why I made it for you guys. Um, I will do a future video, like I said, showing how I would modifying it, trying to add some more flash, some more blades, and um, whether you're gonna use dummies with different hitchhikers, on your dummy um, baits with no hooks in them. So there's gonna be a little bit more that goes into it in that video, but I'll use one of these already made um, umbrella rigs, show you how I cut the wires, how I'm gonna add those blades on there, um, what tools you're gonna need in order to hopefully add some more flash into that umbrella rig and give you an even more of a school of bait look with more potential bait in that school, stuff like that. So stay tuned for that video. But I hope you enjoyed today's video, learn how to make this umbrella rig. Very simple, like I said. If you did, give this video a thumbs up. Comment um, if you like to throw an umbrella rig. Comment down below if you're interested in getting any of these Do It Molds products. Make sure to check out the links in the description and please subscribe to my channel for a lot more of this type of content, other on the water videos as well where I'm out fishing, talking about fishing. Um, also, I hope you've enjoyed the first couple podcast episodes that I've put out on my channel. Just something I'm trying to add to one, bring awareness that I have a podcast, and two, hopefully those of you that um, are YouTube people and you love to watch YouTube videos or maybe you just like to listen to different YouTube stuff while you're doing stuff in the background, you can check out those podcast episodes as well. So those of you that have watched it, really appreciate it. But for those of you new to my channel or haven't subscribed yet, please do that. Please subscribe and please leave a comment and a thumbs up on this video. Thanks for watching, I hope you enjoyed and I'll see you guys next time.